And the other thing, oh, excuse me for a second. The other thing is One of the things about doing so much to clean up your parts makes this phase a lot of fun because now it's the payoff. This is the part where you get to see all of your nice cleaned up parts all come together. And then hopefully that carries through to the test drive. <laughs> At least for this moment, things are pretty cool. to connect the metal brake line in the back and I think it'll be easy to do what I need to with the brakes with bleeding the brakes and all of that without the wheels in the way I'm anxious to get it off the jack stands and have a roller again but I'm gonna wait until I get the brakes clear. I'm gonna finish here and then need to do the fronts This one needs a little help too. It's not going perpendicular. Actually, you know, that looks like it's upside down. That looks a whole lot better to me. I want to stay clear of the snubber here. Perpendicular to this guy, right down the middle. front wheels. I need to put in the wheel seals. I got some new ones for these drums since I was taking everything all apart. And before I put the seal in, I need to put the bearings in. So I'm going to have to pack these with grease, get them in there, and then push this wheel seal into place. So let's, uh, let's do this. up a little bit before I put all these refurbed parts back on. A little bit of degreasing, a little bit of wire brushing here. Just 
about had the brakes on and then I realized I forgot something that I really wanted to do. There's really not enough clearance for my flare nut wrench. So I'm gonna make some clearance. I wanna be careful not to clamp the cylinder portion of this. I'm only gonna clamp here on the mounting part. Bit of this but I think we're okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more. Before I grind anything else I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and test it to make sure I'm doing it right and hopefully this becomes the model for how I do the other three. This should be relatively easy to do. I got all the heavy cleaning done the first time. <laughs> I think that's cool. I'm gonna get these cleaned up and continue. This little booger. These are the jam nuts, the lock nuts, whatever that hold the front wheel drums on. So you have to jam two of these together, which is fine, instead of the more modern lock nut with the Allen head screw in it. The problem that I had was this is a 27 millimeter wrench size and I don't have one of those. So I can use a socket on the outside one, but I don't have a wrench to fit the inside one except for a crescent wrench, which is too thick to squeeze back here, right? So I'm gonna solve the issue by making one. This isn't something that has to be super heavy duty, so I think I can do this with mild steel. So I've got this scrap piece of steel here. I know what size it needs to be, so I'm gonna draw it up, cut it out, use this, and then just throw it in the toolbox. Okay, let's try this again. I've got my wheel cylinders clearanced for the wrench that I want to use to tighten this stuff, so I'm happy about that. And I've got my handy dandy little tool here that I hope is ready to go. All right, I have been through it already, so I kinda, sorta, more than I did before, know what I'm doing. So this should go pretty smooth and easy. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. All right. There's a little bracket thingy over here that had a rubber protector dilly do for the, the hose. About the same size as 3 8 inch fuel line, so that's what I've got. <laughs> It 
makes sense to me that we want to arrange this so that the hose is not rubbing against the spindle as the wheel turns back and forth. Just a little curve in there. That little clamp seems like a real opportunity to cause problems. If I squeeze that too much, the brake pedal will be able to push the fluid through the hose, but the return springs and all that stuff may not be enough to push the fluid back through the hose, meaning this brake would stick. I made it snug, <laughs> and mental note, there's a thing, right? So it'll probably be a good idea for me to go to the book on this one and see what they say about tightening that and just how much. One more wheel to go. pressurizing the reservoir of the master cylinder and pushing the fluid through the system. This is the opposite in a fluid dynamic sense of using a mighty vac vacuum bleeder. It's better for the VW because the design of these seals, the seal is facing back towards the pressure, but if I vacuum bleed the VW, there's not much to keep air from coming in past this seal. So a vacuum bleeder seems like it would be a disaster. I think the two options here are do it conventionally, which is probably the best. If you have a buddy that can operate the pedal for you, just like everybody's done before. The power bleeder's cool when you're the one-man show or the buddy is tired. <laughs> what is a power bleeder? Well, it's basically a garden sprayer adapted for what we're doing today. There's this, right? So this looks just like the cap for the reservoir. 
And then the rest of it is the garden sprayer stuff. It's got a little pressure thingy. It's supposed to go up to uh, 15, if I remember right, 15 PSI. We're gonna put some fluid inside here so that when we pressurize the system, it's gonna be pushing fluid into it. Like that's kind of important, right? The, uh, the opposite of what we wanna do is push air in there. This is mine, I'm taking it with me. Okay, now it's clean. I'm gonna put a good bit of fluid in here because um, I wanna fully flush this system. So a lot of this is just gonna come out the other end. I've messed this up before and run out the fluid in the bleeder. And then you just gotta start all over. <laughs> so just quick check, all of the bleeders are closed. I'm gonna pressurize this to 15 and then I'll go back to the furthest away wheel, the right, right rear and crack that bleeder and let this thing do its job. So I hear air and already got some fluid coming out, so that's great. See a little crud in there too. So the fluid is starting to accumulate in the jar. That's good. It doesn't look too terribly dirty. Okay, we'll go check the bleeder. You may be wondering if I did run out of fluid in the bleeder, as long as I caught it before air went through the, the plumbing, then you can just depressurize and add some more. That's, that's not a big deal. Only lost one or two PSI here. So it's just, you know, it's just doing its thing. Easy peasy, a little bit of a production. The cleanup is the worst part. <laughs> Denatured alcohol is expensive, but you want to do a good job, so you're, you know, you're confronted with that, but it's, it's pretty easy. That's what we're looking for. So right now, we're bleeding the long metal line. Ooh, boy, all right. Maybe I should have gone ahead and loosened it some more. I don't like this fluid seeping out there, but it sure made a difference. Oh, yuck. Definitely getting some flow into the jar now. Still bubbles, ooh. You can feel it kick a little bit when some of those bubbles pass through. I may need to dump this fluid. I'm still getting bubbles, so I'm gonna close it before things get desperate here. Pressure's getting a little bit low, so let's pump it up some. getting a little low out of an abundance of caution here and I'll lose all of it if I let air get into the system so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the remainder of what I have in there I'm gonna move on to the next rear wheel we shouldn't have to spend quite as long at each wheel as we move to the front this is my bleeder turner device AKA wrench. Let's move on to the front. We have a leak. There it is. Let's tighten that and hopefully that solves the leak. The good news here is that it's not coming from inside. That'd be the bad deal is if the seals in the wheel cylinders are leaking, but this just looks like I need to tighten this thing up. That definitely could have been tightened up a little more. I'm gonna clean that off so we can wash for it again. That looks clean. I would be dishonest if I pretended like every time I bleed brakes, everything goes great. You just gotta stick with it until you're done. You don't take one whack at it and say, that's as good as I can do. Well, I have a pedal. The thing about these splitties is they're kind of small. I don't know, that seems like a lot of pedal play to me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go around and adjust the brakes and see what that feels like. I'm not totally satisfied with that. <laughs> these aren't requiring very much, so these shoes have not moved very far. Whoa, that's moved. Now the pedal feels a lot better. Great, I'm gonna call that progress. Can't get a haircut. Everything's shut down. It's still Project Vandemic. 
All right, I think if I have another bottle of brake fluid hanging out in the RV, I try to keep some spares in there. I'm gonna pour that in and go around one more time, just to be sure, then move on to the next thing. Maybe it makes it better, who knows? Look at that, bubbles, holy moly. All right, well, I'm doing the right thing, I guess. More bubbles. This brake fluid has really done a number on my paint. Look at that. That looks like it's still leaking. Oh, that's bad. Oh, man. Both front hoses appear to be leaking at the wheel cylinder. The one on the right that was leaking very badly earlier it was not leaking as badly after I'd tightened up the first time. I snugged both of them up a little bit more. Hopefully that, that does the trick. That's what you accept when you get into it. But at this point, things seem to be going okay-ish and <laughs> I wanna wrap it up and move on to the engine. <laughs> that feels better. Yeah. Let's take one more look, but I think I have solved the leak on the front right hose. I had tightened it once or twice or nine times before, but I backed it off a bit and then retightened it. And it's as tight as it's been now, but no leak. I've hit the pedal a few times just to be sure, because if it's gonna leak, I wanna know it right now. Now it looks like it's solved. So, all right, I need to clean all of this up. Now that I think of it, I'll adjust the brakes for like normal. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm done with the brakes. I'll adjust the brakes for normal use, meaning not locked up. <laughs> and then I'll put the wheels on. And then I'll roll this thing out into the sun. It's been a month. A month and, and two days. So cool, we're checking some big things off the list here. Yeah, let's put this thing on its feet and then start on the engine. That would be pretty cool. Think I should give it a bath? <laughs> yeah, I don't either.